So this video is probably going to be pretty long and I apologize. So I'm going to put timestamps down below so you can skip around or watch whatever you want. But if you want to sit here with me the whole time, just grab some whiskey. It's 2.03 on a Thursday, so grab some whiskey or whatever your beverage of choice is and let's go. I know I don't have that many subscribers and I don't have that many people following me, but I think that I've learned a lot in 2020 and I wanted to share the most inspirational people that I have come across this year. I put a lot of time into this because I think it's very important to do so. You can't just make up a list in five minutes and put it on your Instagram story or something like that because a lot of people take that to heart and you have a lot more power than you might think. And I think if you have 400,000, 500,000 followers um, hanging on your every word or going along with everything that you say, you need to be very precise in who you recommend because you're going to lose a lot of respect by your peers and anyone in the film community if you put out there people that don't deserve to be there. That's pretty much all I'm gonna say about that, so let's get into the list. This is Vince Perry reporting live from the corner of 23rd and East Jefferson Street. I'm live out here in front of the Ezel's Chicken to let y'all know I'm from Florida. I'm from the South. And this ain't no real fried chicken. It's okay. Sitting in my truck, trying to get that lady. I'm plugging to the natural. Remind myself of love and life. Could have been just First up is Vince Perry. And the reason that he's on the list is because he taught me not only a lot about photography in 2020, but he taught me a lot about life in general. Um, the aspect of community is very important to him. And you're going to notice that as a trend in this video, because a lot of the people that I mentioned are very, very active in the community. And I think that's very important. At the start of this year, I could be very cynical and Vince taught me to just be a little bit more chill with everything and not take everything to heart and just be a better person online in general because a lot of people do take the things that you say to heart, so you need to watch what you say and just be a positive influence in people's life. He makes wonderful videos. The London Project is a wonderful series. You should check it out and I'm hoping he puts out a book soon because I'm ready to give him any money that I have for a book of portraits that he has made. So check out Vince. I know you've probably heard about him, but he's number one and inspired me in 2020. Next up is Bray Hunzinger. And I'm sure you guys know that I love Bray's work as well as his as his videos. Um, he's just a very down to earth, authentic and humble person. He's very active in the community as well. I made an analog artisans episode on him because of his work in the community and, um, having an online gallery for other people to share their work. But if you look at Bray's work from the outside, it might look very surface level. Um, just pictures of mountains and pretty sunsets and stuff like that. But if you dig deeper into the actual stories that he tells and the videos that he makes, it goes a lot, lot deeper than that. If you haven't checked out his last video about the most important photos that he's taken, and you'll very quickly understand what I'm talking about when, he, when I mentioned um, story and deeper meanings. Um, it's a wonderful video. And if you know me, I'm not one to go out in public. I'm, I'm a very shy individual, and it takes me a while to open up. But his dumb video about taking photos in grocery stores was very inspirational to me. And at, again, surface level, it looks like he's just taking photos in a grocery store or a hardware store. But when you get down to it, that's going to inspire a lot of people to get out there and not be afraid to make mistakes and not care what other people think. It's not the fact that I'm a woman or the fact that I'm a different race. I want to live in a world where that's not even a conversation because there's equal opportunity and representation of all different people. And we as a community should just stay connected and get along. Next up is Joan Mitchell. And 
she's kind of like Bray in the sense that she makes me just be a better person in general. Um, she doesn't care about subscriber counts. She doesn't care how many likes something gets. And in the very beginning of my f photography journey or whatever you want to call it, I cared greatly about likes, subscribers, how much money I make, things like that. But she's taught me not to care about that, put out the videos that I want to make, and don't be afraid to be controversial in your opinions. She talks about everything under the sun, and there's not an opinion um, that she has that you haven't heard because she speaks her mind, and I think that's what a lot of people need to do. And she's gained my respect for that, and she's gained my respect for or she's gained the respect of a whole um, photography community because of that. When you sit back and you don't speak your mind and you just let things wash over you or you just turn your shoulder, that doesn't help you and you don't gain respect from people when you do that. So go check out Joan's work. She's a wonderful human, a wonderful photographer, and she deserves all the recognition that she should get. Next up is Barney Arthur, and he's on the list mainly because he shoots amazing portraits with the Pentax 67. He's pretty much the whole reason I bought a Pentax 67. And the fact that he's probably 20 or 21 or 22 years old, and that's just absolutely insane. Um, it's, it's inspiring to see a person so young uh, killing it, not only in photography, but YouTube as well. And he's just an amazing person to talk to as well. Just super funny and down to earth. And it's nice to get a view from a, a person across an entire ocean. And it's just amazing that we can connect with those people as well. But if you haven't checked out Barney's work, do it. Um, he's just an amazing portrait photographer. And I've learned so much about studio work because of him and strobes and flashes and Things that I probably won't use because I'm afraid to, but it's nice to know that the information is there. So check him out if you're looking for inspiration for portraits. Next up is Nick Carver, and I'm sure you know him if you watch me or anyone else on YouTube because he's one of the goats. Um, he started his photography channel a long time ago, and the amount of information that he has shared in his videos is enough to last a lifetime. I've learned so much from him. His photography on location videos are some of the best videos on YouTube because they're not over edited. They're, they're just super basic and super chill and he throws in humor exactly when you need it. It's not overly technical. It's not overly simplistic. It's the perfect amount of everything. And I think that's what makes his videos so good. He has a course on metering for film photography and I think it's like eight hours long. That's the way that you should do a course. It shouldn't be half-assed and two hours long and trying to cover everything under the sun. It needs to be a very specific um, lesson. And his metering course is eight hours long for like a couple hundred bucks, and that's absolutely insane. And if it's anything like his YouTube videos, then it's well worth the investment. So if you're new to film or new to photography in general, check out his channel and his photography on location videos because they're some of the best on YouTube. Next up is T Hopper on YouTube, I think. I believe her name is Tatiana. And... She makes me seem like an idiot, and I already know I kind of am an idiot, but when I watch her videos, I really feel like an idiot when it comes to photography because she goes so deep into specific topic topics that it makes me feel like I have half the IQ that I really do. Not only is she very informative and educational when, when it comes to photography, but she's not afraid to share other people's work and she has many videos based around female film photographers you should know and uh, film photographers you should know in general. Some of the titles of her videos include Lewis Hine and Social Photography, The Colors of West Anderson, Edward Hopper Part 1, Carrie Mae Weems and Kitchen Table Series, and The Photorealism of Norman Rockwell. So you can kind of get an idea how her videos are and it's just a treasure trove of information. So definitely check her out if you're looking to dive deeper into not only film photography, but photography or life in general. Lastly, for people that have YouTube channels is Rosie Matheson. And she's honestly the whole reason that I bought an RZ67 um, as my second medium format camera because I saw her portraits with the RZ and the 110 millimeter lens. And it was just... 
I don't know how to explain her portraits, the way that she shoots them and the emotions that she gets. And it just looks like a, a perfect representation of the person that she photographs is the photographs that she takes. And when she came out with her book, Boys, I knew that I had to buy it. I didn't care how much shipping cost or how much it cost. I knew that I had to get it. And I honestly haven't even been through it all yet, but it's a massive uh, 300 page book and the portraits in it are just unbelievable. Next up is Rashad Taylor. I made a video about Rashad. I went out to Bloomington, Illinois from St. Louis and sat down and interviewed him and filmed him photographing his son. And it was an absolutely amazing experience. In his own words, my work addresses themes of race, culture, family, and legacy. And these images are a kind of family album filled with friends and family, birthdays, vacations, and everyday life. At times, I worry if he will be okay as he goes to school or as he plays outside with friends as children do. These feelings are enhanced due to the re realities of growing up black in America. He can't live a carefree childhood as he deserves. There is a weight that comes with his blackness a weight that he is not ready to bear. It's my job to bear this weight as I am accustomed to the sorrows and responsibility it brings. And like, that's honestly why I follow along with Rashad's work. It's inspiring to see someone like that that has to deal with so many different things um, in his personal life and st still make wonderful work. And he does it all in large format, which is um, a process in, a, in and of itself. So definitely check out his work. The next two people that I'm gonna talk about, I've talked about before in a separate video, but Brian Scoopmott and Kyler Zelani, they make very similar work. Um, Kyler shoots a lot of color work on Ektar 100, and Brian Scoopmott shoots a lot of black and white, but they both make amazing portraits and landscapes of people and places in the American Southwest. And it always makes me wanna travel there and just take photos of isolate deserts and people that live there and i think anyone that can inspire you like that is worthy of a following along in their journey and the portraits that he takes on large format every time i shoot a portrait on large format i look at my work and i look back at brian's work and i just can't imagine the amount of practice and the amount of time that he has put in to get what he gets on large format and Kyler's work too, the amount of people that he shoots and the strangers that he shoots is very inspiring. And knowing that he doesn't really know any of the people that he photographs is enough to get me out of the house and uh, photograph strangers on my own. Going along with the strangers theme, Rombi Sandoval is another one. She takes a lot of different portraits of people that she doesn't know and I discovered her on the contact sheet podcast with Kyle McDougall where she talked about her work in LA and just some of the portraits that she gets of people are hard to to believe that they were strangers to begin with the project that she talked about the most on Kyle's podcast was called East of Jesus and she describes it as portraits that were made in Slab City, which is often described as the last free place to live in the United States. Often people travel here to experience living life off-grid. People of all different backgrounds seek a sense of community and solitude in the slabs. There is sometimes an association of running away when you seek life off the grid, but I feel that it is often misunderstood, as those I met were often running towards their own happiness. And not only that, when she takes these portraits or these landscape photos, she has a complete story to go along with it. So it goes much deeper than the photo itself. And these people are never unnamed. They're always named and personalized. And I think that's great when you meet up with someone like that. Um, it's a certain respect and gratitude you have towards them to take their photo and tell their story truthfully. Next up is Olga Sokol or Olga Sokal. I'm not sure how it is, but um, we're just going to go by Olga. And some of her work, I just found her recently, I think around August or September of this year. And once again, she's just a portrait photographer, mostly people that she's never met before. And I just love to follow people that take photos of everyday life. I don't like to look at photos that I couldn't imagine seeing um, with my own eyes. 
And a lot of the places that I go or see are going to be really rural areas because I myself grew up in a rural area. And her project Aftermath, which is still ongoing, is described as at the time the coal industry reached its peak, the Appalachian city of Lynch had a population of around 10,000. By 2018, that number had dropped to 600. When work disappeared from the town and the population dwindled, many of the finest schools closed their doors. The city, built from the ground up by a massive global coal corporation, struggles in its absence. The rapid economic and ecological expansion left not only a change in polluted landscape, but a changed generation. Coal, in many respects, became Appalachia. And just judging by that little preface with the work that she makes is enough to sell me on her work in general. Um, she's not just taking photos of everyday things. There is a certain uh, story that goes along with her photos, and that's what I'm looking for with someone that inspires me. Next up is Erin Springer, but her project, Home is Where the Garden Grows, is one that hits close to home because I myself am a, am a very, uh, I'm, I'm a homebody. Like I like being at home. I like being with my family, things like that things that are close to my heart. And she describes her project as, I remember my grandmother's mud brown trailer, my uncle's big dogs, and our horses thundering through slanted afternoon sun. This was my childhood, and now as I watch my niece and nephew, I begin to see their narrative, an iteration of the same yet vastly different. Since recently losing their father to suicide, these photos have become an insightful portrait in the reckoning of loss hope, and the nostalgia that reveals itself when we lose our youth to unpredictable events within the natural progressions of life. And that hits close to home again because I lost my father two years ago, so I know what it's like to lose a family member close to home. So when I look at these photos, I can see myself in them. And that just reminds me of my father and how he inspires me. And he should be in this list because he inspires me a lot, even though he's not here anymore. So I thank you, Aaron, for that. And definitely check out her work if you're interested. <sighs> so we're done with that video. Um, I hope you guys gained something from it. Uh, I knew it was going to be long and I knew it, I was going to be rambling on about things, but I just wanted to put this out there because there's tons of people that I get inspiration from, and this list is nowhere near um, the full list, but I don't want to make this like a four hour long video, and I know you guys don't want to hear me talk that long, but I hope you guys gained something out of it, and I hope you guys found new people to follow and get inspired from. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. I'm going to put everyone's information down below, and their websites, their Instagram, if they have a YouTube channel, if they have a book out, it's all going to be down below. So make sure to check everyone out. And I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I hope you guys had a good 2020, even though most of it was a shit storm. I hope 2021 uh, treats everyone very well. And I hope we all prosper in not only life, but photography as well. So Hope you guys have a good one. I'm going to go finish the rest of this whiskey and I'll see you then.